Hi, it's Cindy Collins um, with Cindy Collins Designs. I am here sitting in my den with my tribe, um, Sunny and Pumpkin and Lizzie. And then over here is Gray. He's not being very vocal at the moment. Um, I wanted to talk about what happened to Sunny and what can happen to you and how you can prevent it. Um, we didn't know Sunny was was di uh, diabetic. We didn't know that. We took her to the vet um, Thanksgiving week because she was drinking an awful lot of water and it was time for her shots and um, she needed her checkup. She'd been told that she had an enlarged heart and hip dysplasia and, and really she was overweight and she had trouble running and playing and all of that. Well, Long story short, we came to find out that she did not have hip dysplasia. She has a little bit of arthritis on her knee. She did not have an enlarged heart. Um, what she had was diabetic ketoacidosis and pancreatitis. And if we had left all this untreated, she would have died. Um, as it was, they had to do an endoscopy to get um, a, a little obstruction out of her stomach um, she had some kind of a pin. Who knows how she got it? It was probably stuck in something she ate, but that's neither here nor there. Um, her sugar was very, very high, so high that the vet wouldn't tell me what the number was. Um, she stayed in the hospital for um, five days and four nights, and I couldn't be more pleased with the care that she was given. She lost 13 pounds while she was there, which has been good for her. Um, this dog runs like a puppy. She has just the best time. She was doing so well until she went blind. Now, what I found out is that with high sugar in dogs, the sugar will deposit on the lens. If you catch it early enough you can dissolve that sugar. Unfortunately, it will keep coming back as long as the sugar is high, but you can maintain it that way, and some people do, and you can keep them from going blind. <clears throat> if you don't do anything, they will go blind, and it will happen overnight. This happened to Sunny, um, it was about three weeks ago, and on Sunday she could see, and on Monday she could not see. So um, we didn't know that this could happen, and the vet told us that they have no way to predict it. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, so can't do anything about what we didn't know then. We only can do what we know about now. And now the option is to... Um, take out the lens and replace it with an artificial lens, just like cataracts in people. And um, doing that, the sugar won't adhere to the lens. Um, it's an intermediate vision lens. Um, she uh, will be able to see pretty much all around her, um, probably won't be able to see the deer in the woods far away, and might have a little trouble focusing up close, but she will be able to see. It's a very expensive procedure, so of course we thought about a lot about it before we made our decision. We had to look at, at all of the, the things. Um, Sunny's 10 years old, she's diabetic, but she has no other health issues. Um, that we know of, or at least not right now, and we can't worry about that. We have to go on what we know right now. Um, she loves to run and play. She still can play with her ball. Um, she still likes to play with her toys. She still likes to bark at the cat, and um, she loves to eat. And the only issue with her not being able to see is that she gets so excited that she gets disoriented and she runs into things. Um, honestly, I really don't think she would do well as a blind dog. Um, I mean, we would make it work, but to us, there really was 
no other option. Um, she still has plenty of life left in her. Um, she still has several years. And I, I think that, um, that's just the bottom line is, is that we can do that. Now, fortunately, we are in a position to where this won't hurt us too badly. We can, we can afford it. Um, we have no children. Um, we are in our 70s. We live on Social Security and our retirement funds. Um, so it, it's not like, it, you know, a piece of cake, but it's certainly not going to cripple us. Um, <clears throat> some people can't do that. So there are other options. The other options are to medically manage it, um, but they would still be blind. And that was just, for her, that was just not an option. That was just simply not an option. So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because, like I said in the beginning, I did not know. I did not know about diabetes in dogs. I did not know about what it could do. Um, and, and I surely wouldn't want that to happen to somebody else. If you see your dog starting to get cloudy eyes, take them to the vet. If they're drinking a lot of water, for sure take them to the vet because they could be diabetic. And um, that's an easily managed disease if you catch it early enough. Um, and, you know, if you don't, there's all kinds of complications. Um, you don't really want to have to deal with everything that goes along with diabetic blindness. Um, now, um, her care... Afterwards, she will she will go in on Tuesday morning. She's going next week. She'll go in on Tuesday morning. They do about a half a day of functional test um, just to absolutely make 100% sure that she's a candidate. The way it looks right now, she is. Um, and then she will stay that night. We had the option of taking her home, but we live about an hour from our vet and it's so traumatizing for her, the trip over there. She pants the whole way and so stressed. Um, he did give us some uh, relaxers so that when we take her back, she won't be so stressed. And we'll have those going forward. Um, but um, we just thought it'd be better if she stayed overnight. Um, then in the morning, on Wednesday morning, they will do the surgery. They will keep her overnight Wednesday night um, just to make sure that everything's okay. And then she will come home Thursday. She'll have an e-collar for about two weeks. And she will um, have to do drops very much like a a person does when they have cataract surgery. She'll do drops. And eventually those, you know, will wane off to where she'll have to do um, just one set of drops twice a day for the rest of her life. Uh, when you compare that to not being able to see, uh, it's a no-brainer for us. So this is just our decision, something that we're going to do. And um, hopefully you won't be in a situation where you have to make that decision. Um, the other thing I might say is you might want to look into pet insurance. Um, we didn't. We don't have it. And right now for us, it'd be kind of like um, closing the gate after the cow got out. Um, it's a little too late. But some vets do take pet insurance, and it covers things like this. Um, and I'm very seriously considering getting it for for Punkin. She has no health issues other than neuroses. Um, uh, she's she's afraid of thunderstorms, uh, very afraid of thunderstorms. And Lizzie over there um, has seizures, so I don't know that they'd be covered. And my little gray man over here, hey, gray man, gray, hey, gray. Yeah, okay. Uh, little gray man has um, chronic kidney disease. He's 14, and he has to have subcutaneous fluids twice a week. So all of those things um, at, at this animal hospital that I go to would be covered. But um, I, I don't think that they... I think it's kind of like humans with pre-existing conditions. So I, I didn't look into it. But that's something, you know, if you if you can, you might want to look into it for yourself. Well, anyway, I hope some of this information has helped you. Um, 
helped somebody. Um, and all right, you guys, cut it out. And I, I hope you'll think about my little Sunny and maybe say a prayer for her, um, for things to go well for her. Um, she's a very special little girl. Thank you.